everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and these are the top two iPhone or iOS keyboards that you chose. I did a video similar to this a few days ago about my top two keyboards, and some of you had concerns either about privacy or you actually weren't able to download one of the keyboards in your country. So these are the top two that you picked. Now, the first one is SwiftKey. And the unique thing about SwiftKey, not only does it support swipe, and I'll show you that in a moment, it has a hundred different languages that it supports. And they update this often, but it's got a bunch of different ones. So not only does it have your traditional languages, that you find in many countries, but it has many obscure languages as well that you may not see as commonly. So you've got a bunch of different options and that makes this one a little bit unique. So if you go back, we can go to design and actually customize our keyboard. So if you don't like the default nickel dark theme, you've got light, cogs black, blue, zigzag light, a bunch of different ones that are just free and you can install them. So that's pretty nice as well. We also have some settings for your typical things such as autocorrect, quick period, auto capitalization, key click sounds, and so on. And then it also keeps track of a lot of different things locally. Now you can choose to sign in if you want it to keep some personalization across different devices, things like that. But I chose not to, I, I don't really want to save that information so it's not a big deal. And it keeps a lot of information on the device about your statistics and usage. So productivity, I'm 43% more productive using SwiftKey. So that's pretty nice. It shows you distance typed using flow, typos corrected, words typed using flow. So this was reinstalled after you suggested different keyboards. I tried a bunch of different ones, found my favorites, and then did that video, and these are your favorites. And this is actually a pretty good keyboard the more I've used it. So let's take a look at it. If we go into notes, this is the keyboard. Now we don't have voice interaction here. So we can't use our voice to actually type. So if you want to do that, you'll have to switch back to the traditional keyboard and do it that way. So I can say, hi, how are you today? And I wasn't very accurate there. Let me try it this way. Hi, how are you? And this one actually learns how you type. So if it's not accurate, you can go back and fix it. And it will learn how you type over time. And then make it a little bit different. It will change the spacing on the keyboard by itself to actually accommodate how you swipe. So it's pretty nice there. Now you have quick access to your emojis, which is nice. And then it also has predictive text at the top. So that part's pretty nice as well. So hi, you can see all the predictions at the top. And that just fixed it for me. The second keyboard is very unique and many people suggested it and it's a paid keyboard. It's actually $5, but the advantage you get with that is it does not use any of your information. It doesn't store any of it. It doesn't share any of it. And you don't even have to turn on the privacy settings to use it. So that's actually called Nintype. So let's go to the next keyboard. Right, we'll go here. And this is Nintype. Now you can theme this how you want over and over and over. And this is a current theme that it's on. And it's very unique in that it allows two finger or two thumb swiping. So for example, if I want to type the word how I can do it like that. So as you saw, I just swipe HO and hit W and it's how and it understands that you can do this with more complex words and it actually learns as well. It's got a ton of different options. So if I go into here, go into the options to the themes, there's quite a few themes in here. Moon Prism is pretty incredible. So I'll hit that, hit this button, turn on the effects. We'll turn the rainbow parts on and let me show you this. There we go. So now we'll say hi and I'll just type. It looks incredible as you're typing. So I thought that was pretty nice. We'll hit this. And we'll back out of these options. You can see it's got all sorts of different things that you can do with this particular keyboard. It's pretty incredible. Now, if you want to backspace, push, hold, slide to the left or back, it erases and puts everything back. It's pretty neat how it works. So you have those options as well. Now you don't have dictation in either one of these keyboards. So that's unfortunate, but this has short, a shortcut system built in a correcting top bars. They call, they call it across the top here a customizable top bar, predictable autocomplete, a lot of different options. And it actually walks you through how to use these different things within the app itself. So you can see if I go back, it, it doesn't look very 
design focused here, but it has notes built in, ideas, to-do list, archive notes. These are all built into the app and the keyboard itself, and you can access them while you're in the keyboard. So if you wanna go here, you've got news and power saver, all sorts of interesting things. You've got your emoji, your KO emoji built in. So if you want this face here, you've got that. It's all built in. We'll go back. You've got quick pace, you can see there. We've got this, and then you can save shortcuts that you use a lot. So if you hit, well, there's some of these buttons here, you hit at the top, A to Z. It learns things. You've got these pinned shortcuts, the word hello. The options go on and on and on, and it looks really nice. And, and if you learn this two finger swipe, you can get very, very fast on it. I could probably do a separate video completely on Nintype itself and the different themes and everything else it has. It's that complex, and many of you recommended it. The only problem with both of these is they don't have the voice dictation built in. The good thing about them though is they do support 3D text or 3D touch depending on how you have the keyboard set up. So if I go back into this one, you'll see it has the, the 3D touch built in if you have a 3D touch display. So it's very nice that both of those have that and they, the Nintype keyboard just has an amazing amount of options if you want to use it for everything from notes to your main keyboard and speed. So it's pretty interesting that that's all built in. But if you've used either of those, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know your favorite keyboard in the comments below as well. If I didn't cover it here, let me know if you'd like to see more of these videos. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.